Sorry, I'm a lecturer, so I like to be in control of the, the clicker. Um, that was an amazing speech, and it's kind of a hard one to follow. Um, I'm in the fortunate position of not talking about my own projects, but my students' projects tonight, which takes the um, pressure off a little bit. So we recently ran a project in the Interior Spatial School that, um, as the introduction suggested, looked at the idea of the home as a tool of urban transformation. Um, due to the generous involvement of Modern House, who are uh, an amazing real estate company, if you haven't heard of them, they represent a lot of the kind of iconic modernist houses in Sydney. Um, students were able to get access to these homes and to, to sort of study them really closely to start to think about how we could reuse them. Um, if I, can I just pause it for a second? Sorry. Um, <laughs> So part of, part of the thing with it was that we, we looked at this idea of um, these kind of houses as they represent kind of iconic case studies of Arcadian visions, of beautiful modernist projects, iconic contemporary houses, um, and how their extraordinary responses in the context of their time and place. And if you're looking for a house and you love beautiful design, I highly recommend them. However, um, Many of us cannot afford to kind of buy these houses. Um, and if you add in factors of rising populations in our cities, problems with the suburban model in, in city making, and increasingly diverse demographics, we started to think we had ourselves an idea for a studio. So we asked our students to double the population of these houses. The first one we've been looking at is a Gissing house. So they could choose a number of different demographic pairings. There was one that was an alternative solution to um, ageing populations. So it was a kind of alternative retirement home where four groups of Eldens or Oldens would, would gather and there'd be a provision for live-in care. Um, we also looked at the idea that there would be a kind of multi-generational home, so grandparents their kids and grandkids would share one of these houses together. Um, and the final one was that we looked at the idea of a kind of grown-up version of the share house, where two families would choose to share a suburban house together. And we've skipped to Kate's, and Kate's here tonight, um, so she can step in if I say anything incorrectly. We looked at... Um, I also must really thank the architects who let us kind of edit their houses, because they're quite perfect as objects. So it was quite cheeky of us to start to think about how to edit them Kate, as any good student does, took the project and kind of expanded it and said she could actually fit all of these demographics on this, this kind of Arcadian site. And so she had um, a solution that she then kind of went into the Eldens in more detail. And she looked at, um, I, I think the Angofra has still got to grow up through the gaps between these pavilions, but she looked at a shared kitchen around which um, people would have some sort of semi-private spaces. Um, but the thing that I loved in Kate's project, if I can skip through, was this space, which was the bathing space. So it was a series of floating platforms as it exists, and her edit was to drop the bath towards the ground, so that makes it easier for, for people who have old bones to get in and out of. And um, I think the, the materiality that she used in that space was also really beautiful. Um, the final project that I'll talk about tonight is this one, which is a beach coma house designed by Nino Sydney in the 1960s, and it was in collaboration with Lenlease. Um, as a model, it's, it's already a kind of inventive thinking about this, the suburbs, and as befits its kind of radical nature, our student Lachlan looked at it in terms of uh, its, its position in the 1960s to now, to the future, and started to propose a radical can't skip forward, uh, a radical reconfiguration of it, not as interiors, but as a series of objects and how they might stack on top of one another. Again, he was an ambitious student, so he proposed it not just for one sort of demographic, but to house all of the different demographics that we, we asked the students to look at. And so you start to see kind of open platforms between these. He starts to tip the structure up on its side. Um, and, and really start to look at a kind of much more radical um, solution. I'll just I'll skip a little bit towards my, my conclusion. Um, one of the things that I think that, that this studio started to do was really get our students to think about homes not just as objects, as architectural spaces, but also about the idea of how we might live together. Um, 
when, when we, the, the idea of home is a relatively new one. It really kind of emerges, as we understand it in the West, from the Dutch around the 17th century. We start to sort of see people living in individual family groups. The, the way that our students were starting to think about it was that if we start to understand the lineage of, of how houses or how we, how we think of homes and family groups, we start to see that this, this idea of the nuclear home is ripe for kind of rethinking. So, just, this, was, this was sort of how people were starting to think about living at, um, around the time the Dutch were starting to see separate dwellings as an ideal. And this is partly, you know, the whole idea of how we live together was around preventing these kind of spaces, this sort of looked like it was going to produce a kind of moral corruption that people were all living together and, and, and that there was a kind of problem that there might be health-wise. So really this idea of domesticity, privacy, comfort and the concept of home and family are really the principal achievements of, of the bourgeois age. Whether or not they're the correct achievements or whether we've ended that, that solution is up for debate as this slide would suggest. So Nixon and Khrushchev start to debate these ideas of communism and capitalism in front of a kitchen in, in the uh, Moscow Expo in 1969. And this is, this is no accident that the home is the center of this debate of how we live together. This year we looked instead at the Terrace House, which is a kind of resilient urban model in Sydney. And we, we made it even more difficult for the students. They had to look at six terrace houses and propose nine houses across those um, six terrace houses. And it was um, a little bit like inserting the, the density of Hong Kong into Sydney. Um, and this is just one of the students' proposals. This is Chanel's work. Thanks. <laughs>